going to be talking briefly about zero clients. It says, my name is John Webb. I'm the, the technical director at Trackheim. What is a zero client? You've all probably got PCs on your desks at the moment. And they'll have a processor of some description, a hard drive, memory, operating systems, applications, etc. installed. Quite a lot of things to go wrong. A zero client, as the name suggests, has nothing. The Fujitsu zero client that we have here today is literally a screen that you insert a power cable into, a network cable, uh, USBs to drive your keyboard and mouse, and from a device point of view, that is it. So there is no PC, there is no operating system. As a result, there's no fans, so the devices are completely silent. There's very little heat, and they take up a lot less space. So if we've just got a screen sitting on a desk effectively with a network cable in it, keyboard and mouse, and nothing else, how does it actually work? Well, it relies on uh, a, a concept known as VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. Many of you in the, in the IT land, certainly within the AHS, will already be aware of, of virtualization technologies uh, and are probably already engaged with, if not deploying virtualization technology in your server room, taking physical machines and virtualizing them to get multiple machines running on single hardware platforms using tried and trusted technologies from an example, VMware being one of them as a hypervisor. So the way in which VDI works is conceptually very, very similar to that as a server room. We have VMware in this example. We create our virtual desktops, VDMs, virtual desktop machines. On the back end in the server, we configure our operating system, our applications, etc., as you would need to. Exactly the same as you would in the physical world. We install it in the virtual world. The client turns on, boots off the network, connects to the back-end infrastructure, the user logs on, and they're presented with a Windows desktop <coughs> exactly as they would do if they were running a physical machine. The USB ports on the screen are magically connected to the back of the VDM, so if you were to plug in a printer or any other USB device, you would get the standard Windows, Bing, new hardware detected, run through a driver configuration, exactly the same way as you would in the physical world but this is running in the back end in the virtual world. So what are some of the benefits? From a green point of view, that's very relevant to all of the public sector at the moment, but we have the extremely low power consumption. We only have one power supply necessary. There are no fans, there is little heat. So some of the statistics I've read is that if a, a trust was to deploy zero clients instead of its PC estate, it would hit its carbon footprint, tri its carbon footprint targets on just that alone, with a reduction of heat and energy. So we obviously have a, a lot of green advantages. We also have something on there with the life cycle. Many of you will have budgets to replace large portions of your PC estate every year. That may well be as a result of hardware changes, new operating systems, the machines just running out of warranty. Because a zero client, has none of those considerations. It's literally just connecting to the back end and has very little moving parts, therefore has extremely high reliability. The zero client can see you through your life cycle. No need for PC refreshes. As Windows 7, Windows 2020 comes out, once it's deployed in the back end, it's instantly available to your users on the front end. So very long life cycles. As we've mentioned there with regard to manageability, at the moment when you're having a Meditrust are looking at deploying Windows 7 and moving away from Windows XP, at the moment the IT teams are probably busy looking at building different configurations of Windows 7 in the back end and testing it, maybe having to say, take some considerations with regard to the different hardware platforms that you have out there at the moment. With VDI and zero client, same work needs to be done. IT teams still need to build a Windows 7 image, test it, configure it, profile it, but the moment they're ready and they're happy with it, it's available to their desktops. No more needing to go around any machines, no more needing to clone out machines, it's just available for users as and when. One of the nice things about this is, is that it can also allow for stage deployments. So as an example, Windows users moving from Windows XP to Windows 7, because these machines, these VDMs are created in the, in the virtual world, they're not real, you may have a Windows 7 machine and a Windows XP machine. Users can be presented when they log on with whether they like to run a Windows XP 
for a Windows 7 session, perhaps they hadn't had their training, and they can click on whichever operating system and load up they feel comfortable with, and then get a gradual migration over to Windows 7. When you're happy with that, simply delete your Windows XP machine. From a security point of view, as we mentioned here already, there is nothing on the device. It is literally just a screen with a network cable. All of the data, even user profiles, applications, are all stored back at the data center. So should a device be stolen or lost, from a data point of view, there's no risk. Okay. So clearly a, a good technology, but why are we introducing or why are we even talking about zero clients at a mobile point of care conference? As we mentioned there, the, the screens are just connecting to a back-end system. The actual PC is running on a back-end server. So in terms of accessing it, we can access it from, from almost any device. This brings us on to the Fujitsu Zero Client USB key. This is a USB key that can be attached to any Windows-based device. The user simply runs a small executable program that sits on the key, and that connects them to their back-end VDM, their infrastructure, securely. The only integration between the application and the Windows PC is to utilize the hardware of the network interface, the USB ports and the screen. There is a, a physical block put between the device's OS and the virtual machine's OS, so there's no chance of transfer of any viruses, spyware or anything that may be on the local machine. It does say up there that it can provide secure access without the need for a VPN. That is the case, but it does obviously depend on how the trust is connected. If the trust doesn't have a direct, uh, doesn't have a direct internet connection, then that would need to be brokered through a VPN, and yes, you would be then exposing the local machine's hardware via the VPN. But if it's into the N3 core network, then you're just exposing the machine to N3, and you can simply run your zero client over the top to connect to your backend infrastructure. So with this USB key, users can, can take their virtual desktops home, they can run it from a mobile device, they can run it from remote sites. It will work, the connection protocols that it says down there, RDP over HTTPS, it will run over 3G very, very well. Um, it will work on GPRS, but to be fair, it will be a, a little bit stop and start, but 3G, HSDPA and above, it will run and perform like any other sort of RDP session. Okay. Many organizations are wanting to look at proving this zero client concept, so, but the problem they have is once they have the back-end infrastructure, it may well involve replacing users' desktops with zero clients, and that may introduce some reservations. What we're able to do with the USB key is plug that, once we've configured and worked with a trust on configuring a, a VM server, with our Windows environment and access to the applications, using that USB key, we can plug that into any machine on the estate. The user's already on the LAN, they run a small executable, and they have full access to the zero client as part of a proof of concept stage or a testing stage. If they have any issues at all with the connection, it doesn't work, they have any problems, all they simply need to do, remove the USB key, reboot their PC, and there they are in flat mode exactly as they were before. So using the USB key as part of a proof of concept, we're able to give a zero client proof of concept with zero risk to the users. Okay, we'd say it was short and sweet. VDI and zero clients are a lot more in depth and as Patrick's mentioned, we actually have some zero clients uh, outside connected to a virtual server running a number of Windows sessions. So you, you can actually go and see that, touch and feel it for yourselves, test the speed and prove that this technology does, or does actually work. Um, and that's it from me. I deliberately haven't invited any questions, but uh, if anybody does have any. Yes, sorry. Pardon? Question. <laughs> no, please. Um, how do you see this technology matching up against thin client technology and Windows Terminal Services? Because it's very similar, isn't it? So what's the pros it and cons? It is. Um, with a thin client, you still have an operating system on a thin client, you still have hardware, you still have things to, to go wrong um, that you don't have with the zero client in terms of the technologies, but they are very, very similar. You know, virtualization is not just about VMware, you know, Citrix, RDP, um, terminal services, they are all forms of VDI 
removing the operating system from the local physical device to the back end. So, you know, I don't necessarily, my personal view is I don't necessarily think that VMware and true virtualizations of the machines in this way will be the only way about it. I think there will be mixes and matches and pros and cons on both. If a trust already has a full Citrix deployment, um, then that may well be something they want to look at. We are looking at introducing the zero client technology, um, being able to connect to a Citrix backend infrastructure without the need to run a local ICA client on the device without memory or hard drive. Anybody else?